right. Hello. Uh, welcome to Collaboratory, the show where Mike Morris improvises an animatic with a little help from our audience. And we learn about the craft of storyboarding along the way. Uh, this is an improv art stream that runs on audience suggestions. Uh, Mike, what kind of prompts are we looking for from the audience? Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Um, we are looking for three things. Uh, our standard three. We're looking for a couple of characters, a setting, and a conflict. The three main building blocks of any kind of real storytelling. Exactly. Uh, so feel free to jump in with any of your suggestions, and whatever you type might show up on screen. Absolutely. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Mike? I'm doing okay. So for, for those of you who may not know, this is Ariel Yet. She's a, a colleague of mine, a excellent storyboard artist and episodic director um, that uh, we worked with, uh, or, or we worked together some years ago. So Indeed. great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I, I hope uh, I am as knowledgeable as your other guests. I feel a bit intimidated, but I will do my best. <laughs> and uh, and I know the you know, episode is about 2D and CG, you know, 3D uh, shows. I've worked yeah. on many, many a show at Disney TV uh, that are all CG, Elena F. Avalor, uh, Chicken Squad, um, Alice's Wonderland Bakery currently. Um, so I'm very familiar with uh, working as a board artist and a director within shows where you know you're you're doing two D boards, but you're having to work within a three D pipeline. So, right, and I know that you know Storyboard Pro has some three D capability. There's a couple of different kinds of of three D in in Pro. Like, say I wanted to like you know just build like a quick three D set. Let me just add a couple of layers here. You know, I'll just I'll just use A through A through C, like or A through D. Say say I had like a a, a thing like this, right? And then um, I wanted to just build like a really quick, you know, three wall three wall set. Right. I'll just do this. Color that in like that. I'm going to duplicate this like a couple times, duplicate, uh, duplicate and duplicate. So now I have this, I can, I can make this into a 3d scene here. Um, by just going to the storyboard enable 3d for current scene. And that's when <coughs> the magic starts happening and I can, uh, take all of these and, um, start to to turn them around in space right so if i set um the center pivot on selection that'll get will get me right to the center there i'm gonna do that for all these layers and then um as a 3d scene now i have access to this uh 3d navigation bar so if i go to my stage view where i was on i was on camera so now i can turn things around in space so this is a really great way to get some some of that like good parallax and stuff that you would get in a in a film. So I can take this and then I can start to to move these pieces around. And then if I just sort of uh, click off of that and click back on, now I have access to the proper numbers down here, and I can you know go 90 degrees. Whoop! That was 890 degrees. I don't want that. <laughs> 90 degrees. Just 90 degrees. That's it. And then I can start moving these pieces around in space, right? Mm -hmm. come, back, come back here to my 3D navigation and start just building out some stuff. So using the um, <clears throat> the image, or I mean the, uh, the transform tool, whoops, I can start moving things around in space. and just create like a little small set. Oh, we have our first suggestion, Mike, uh, for a setting. Oh, yeah, uh, Andrea K. Hade suggested, how about a forest? And I hope I said your name right. I apologize. If <laughs> the forest, okay. Which is great because uh, anything organic is a lot easier to draw and kind of uh, deal with in a perspective uh, background. It's always, always it's my true. favorite. <laughs> You know, uh, forests yeah. forests are, are a mixed bag sometimes, you know, because it's either a lot of work or not so much. Mm -hmm. 
because forests you you have a lot to a lot to deal with. So you can fair, like fair. manipulate some of these, like say that that's a little bit too long. So I can just you know put that right in the middle there. Um, I feel like I'm getting an education here. I've never I've never uh, played with these uh, with these tools before. You know, in uh, if uh, any of our audience, whoops, if they ever do some of the um, the training materials. So I, I years ago uh, I did the training materials for uh, the you know the current iteration of uh, the Tomb Boom uh, training program, and mm -hmm. we did some some 3D work in that one that was uh, you know pretty good. You get some good parallax out of it, you know, like when mm -hmm. you're doing oh, yeah. um, when you're doing scenes. It's really quite helpful. Um, just. You know, figuring out your placement is the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah, once you got the layout and placement figured in, you're off to the races. Uh, yeah, I was sure. telling Mike before when he uh, he asked if I'd be interested in joining, when you asked, uh, I said, oh, well, I've never really played with the 3D features in Storyboard Pro. Most of the time when I've worked on uh, CG shows, um, we usually have SketchUp or F FBX file uh, on one screen and I just kind of navigate and move the camera where I want it to be, take a screenshot and then plop that into storyboard pro. And then I just draw my characters on top of it and that, and that's been my workflow. I think other people probably do, may do it differently. Some have uh, imported uh, models directly into storyboard pro and they, Which they you totally can do. Yeah. 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 A lot of the, yeah. A lot of so now, it. now I have this like little box set, right? So, um, while we're waiting for, uh, we have a forest, so we have our setting. We just need characters. One more suggestion. Uh, Pearl suggested uh, online dating goes bad. A girl sets up a dating profile to find a husband, and she engages in conversations with several men, but then she meets one cool guy. Uh, when they finally meet in person, it's her ex. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So, so I, um, I've never dated in the forest before, though. I did get asked to go on a date on a hike, and I was like, that's a great way to get killed. So I don't know. <laughs> that, but, uh, but I think we can make it work. Like, maybe it's maybe not a forest, but it's at, you know, a garden or something like that. Well, I, I don't know. I, th I think we can do some some forest dating. I, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't think that's, uh, yeah. I don't think that's too I mean, far in the realm of possibility. Oh, one caveat. They have to be human, is, too, uh, so... One one thing that I will say about doing stuff in the 3D realm here is that um, you know in order to to change any of the artwork that you make, you have to do this thing here. Like I'm going to select this uh, uh, this layer, and I'm going to do this to this little box right here, right down at the bottom. Little teeny thing says "Look at selected," and so I can check on that, and then that's when I can like edit my artwork. So I can change that that to green. So now I, you see that I have like a, you know, <laughs> almost like color bars, you know, for uh, yeah. for something. You got your green screen, your blue screen, and the yeah. less used red screen for. And uh, so, like, if I was to just do a drawing on one of these, so say like I, I wanted to put in like some sort of like weird wallpaper pattern or something like that. I can just draw it on 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 this somewhere, you know, like uh, like uh, stripes or you know something. Mm -hmm. It shows up on both sides. Shows up on both sides. Oh, cool! So th there's no um, there's no like texturing or anything like that, like you would in like a 3D program, like, or, like Blender or Maya or one of those. Um, it just you draw on a layer. And, uh, you know, sometimes it gets a little complicated, but uh, it's really fun to do. So anyways, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get into some forest, shall we? Yeah. All right. Um, I think that we can do, um, you know, shit, let's see. So this is a, a forest dating situation. So I think we're kind of thinking of like, what, so it's like Zootopia type characters. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Oh, I love anthropomorphic characters. So yeah, uh, <clears throat> what what do you think about like um, so maybe like a, a, a an opening up on like a dating video? 
like one of those ones where you're like, hey, I'm just checking this out, you know, like, or should we do, go like this already like is happening, like it's been scheduled, people are going to show up. Yeah, we could start on the one character who's like they're they're meeting up for a blind date and, you know, they're excited, okay. and, you know, they're looking around, waiting, occasionally checking their phone to like see like, oh, this is who they expect they're going to see, you know, kind of build up the anticipation. And that will give us a chance to kind of set the scene. Yeah, uh, I like that. So let's let's do let's do this. Let's do a little little hill. You know, um, I think you know one thing that we could do. Let's build some assets, and then we'll do we'll do a three D move. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll set that up. Okay, so um, <coughs> I'm going to draw some trees <coughs> here, um, and these are just going to be again, you know. If you came here expecting awesome artwork, you're going to be disappointed. Listen, I'm glad you're the one drawing. So uh, <laughs> let's do so, just a couple of, of trees here. Um, you know, just some just some pines. Well, what we'll do this is, a, you know, the standard North American type forest because that's what I'm familiar with. <laughs> And then um, we can do this where um, we'll put in draw behind and um, the autofill. And then I'm just going to trace this behind it so we have a perfectly uh, filled in thing here. All right, there we go. Let's put in a trunk underneath it and do that. Bob Ross, be proud. And Huh? All the happy little trees. Yeah, Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I always liked, uh, I don't know if you ever watch uh, uh, epic rap battles of history, but Bob Ross no. versus uh, Pablo Picasso was pretty funny. Oh, I haven't seen that. I'll have to check it out. I think I would, I would put him up against another PBS all-star like Jerry Yarnell or, you know. Yeah. Those are those for are sure. my uh, for for anybody that's younger than forty in the audience. That's the <laughs> other PBS guy besides uh, Bob Ross, who was uh, frequently watched. Okay, so we got one of our happy little trees. We'll add a couple little, you know, lines on there just for funsies. And then uh, in deference to time, I am going to just duplicate this a bunch of times. Oh, yeah. duplicate. duplicate. Uh, let's see here where to go. Duplicate and duplicate. And then I'm going to do this too. This one I'm going to actually just go to the bottom layer. What I'm going to do on this one is I'm just going to hold down control and just move it to the side and it duplicates itself. So, and then I'm going to, um, you know, sort of mess around with the proportions here um, and just kind of stack some of these. Mm -hmm. um, make them bigger, smaller, you know, like I can put one in the extreme foreground. Uh, yeah, always nice to have, um, have some depth in, uh, yeah. especially in establishing shots. Just really uh, feels more cinematic, brings you in. Absolutely. And then, you know, another thing that is you can do also to mask the fact that you're reusing a bunch of drawings uh, <laughs> is, uh, you know, just tilt them a little bit. Just tilt oh, yeah, them and distort. Them, you know, just uh, a, a little bit here and there. I mean, you're not like trying to deceive anyone per se but you just want to make sure that <laughs> the board feels has like it has a little variety like if this was a, a board that i was doing like for a show or professionally i'd probably you know have more trees but um yeah, yeah same i do like maybe a variety of like three and then just copy paste copy paste and uh yeah exactly because the nice thing is like it's it's not like this is a finished you know uh the Usually the designers come in after the fact, after you've figured everything out and they kind of put things on model or, or get inspired by your boards too. So, um, yes. So yeah, but you also just don't want these perfectly uniform, very clearly copy and paste. It, it just gets distracting. So 
Yeah. And so here we go. We've got this here. And um, I am going to um, turn this into a 3D scene. So boom. Now it's a 3D scene. So now we can do our navigation again like that. You notice our camera is a little bit different too. You know, we've, we've got uh, <coughs> we've got all of these trees. And I'm going to take these. And I'm going to put them inside of a group. So we're going to um, group selected layers. So now we have this uh, group here. And I'm going to turn on the layer motion. And so we can start this, this group of trees Ooh. here and sort of multiplying them out as we as we move into um, this area. So um, moving these, I'm going to use the uh, this little tool here. This is the maintain size tool. Now notice when uh, when I you know select this tool, there's a little blue arrow, and I'm on the top layer. Notice that tree sort of like shrinks like this. But if I turn on my camera view, you can see the camera view right here on the on the side. Make it a little bit bigger. Um, it doesn't change. Like it doesn't change size at all. Everything just stays the same. But it's moving forward in space. It's just shrinking according to the camera. So I'm just going to move a couple of these, you know, away from one another. Um, I'm going to move them forward a little bit. Move this one forward a little bit. And then this um, thumbnail layer, <coughs> I'm going to move it back a little bit. So now we have uh, a little bit of forest here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to look at selected, grab that, and I'm going to control and move that over. I'm just going to give it a little bit of something, something right there. Now, if we go to our camera view, we, we start out on these trees and then we can get our camera out. And I'm just going to go back to stage view for that. Um, and what we can do is get a little bit of a top view happening. You can also go up, come up here and go to uh, top view. And that'll show you a, a little scene that looks like this, right? And all of these are our various layers. So moving the camera, I can just uh, use my camera tool and select that. Now I have this little gizmo right here. It's only showing uh, the two ways because uh, you know we're in top view, so we're not going to see the Y axis. Yeah. But um, I'm just going to move this over a little bit like that. You can see that the trees are kind of moving in the in the view there. We oh, get that right free on. parallax, right? So I'm going to start the camera just. So here, I guess I could probably put in a couple more trees on this side if I wanted to, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, Time is of the then, essence. Yes. Then we're going to drop we a keyframe. We've got an animal date to get to. <laughs> yeah. We've got, we got some real emotional meat to handle. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to drop a keyframe in the front, keyframe in the back. And then I'm going to go like this and move the camera over a little bit um, in its final position. So we've got this kind of a thing, right? We've got that happening. I'm just going to extend the time a little bit. Um, and, and it's during stuff like this where you get like a little bit of, uh, you know, ring, 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 ring. All right, where is this person? I don't know where in the heck they are kind yeah. of thing. Um, now, going back to my stage view, now I can take this and I've, I've, uh, I'm going to put home and I'm going to turn, uh, whoops, I already turned that running man on. Turn the little running man on, say that this has got some layer motion on it. Then I'm going to go to end. And then I'm going to move these trees like a so. So now what we have is this opening scene. As the, you know, the trees oh, nice. become Reveal. essentially a little curtain. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. First animal on the top of your head. Snake. Snake. Ooh, a snake yeah. on a date. I've always thought that reptiles look more like humans than any other animals. So, you know, maybe she's, you know, well, okay. Yeah. Maybe using their tail as their hand holding like their phone. Uh, it's a, 
It's a lady okay. snake, you know. Uh, I don't know how this is going to pan out with, like, how do we establish who her ex is? Maybe it's, like, a mongoose or something like that. Um, <laughs> oh, you. Yeah. Kind of thing. All think right. about it. We're going to um, also... Be wearing a nice little tube top or something like that, you know. <laughs> tube top? That's funny. Yeah. All right. Let's turn on um, our um, little tool here to draw behind and fill in, do the autofill. Boom. Oh, I did that in the wrong layer. <laughs> so that's not gonna See, happen. I always like to have a, a light table uh, feature on my Storyboard Pro so I know what layer I'm on. It, it just makes it a little more convenient, kind of. Uh... That does make it more convenient, yeah. right? I should probably do that's that. That's just me, so not telling you how to work. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. So let's put some rocks on here. Yeah. So make it a bit of a rocky, you know, scrubby type of a situation. Um, let's do another little draw behind um, here, just so we can have a little bit of texture. Uh, whoops, I didn't, I didn't totally close off my shape. So you have to make sure that you close off the shape or it doesn't work. You'd be like, why isn't it working? Yeah. you didn't close off the shape. There we go. And uh, I'm just going to change... A little bit lighter on the color. And uh, yeah, now we're going to have our character in this next panel. I'm going to duplicate the panel as I am want to do on this show. Mm -hmm. We love a duplication. All right, so then we have this. <clears throat> and uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, we're going to go to the end here and we're going to unclick this because we do not need uh, disabling animation. We'll clear all the keyframes in the layer. It's exactly what we want, because we don't want it moving anymore. So boom, we've got this. And then now we're going to put in our character. And I, I suppose we could put in some other BG elements, you know, some sort of like... Uh, I think this kind of is good enough whatever. for, it's, for it's a, a rough, you know? Yeah, it's, it tells me everything I need to know. Now we can draw, um, let's see. Do you have a preference on like a brush? Like, do you, are you a fancy person and like to use, you know, kind of certain Am type of brush or, yes? Um, depending on the situation. And and don't forget to give her you know little cute eyelashes because that's cartoons have always taught me that female animals need to have eyelashes. That's how you know. I mean, how would you know otherwise, right? Exactly. Yeah. She's got a little tube top on. There we go. Nice. Um, She's styling. Yep. Yeah, we'll just uh, give her a little uh, opaquing there. Actually, you know, she looks a little bit too dissatisfied. And if you notice, she's she moving. She's kind of bummed out, a yeah. Bit because the, she is an, on the parallax. So what we're going to do to fix that little problem is make sure that she is on the same plane as this rock. So we're just going to move her back a little bit. Just in front of that. And move her up slightly so again we're, we're, we're really relying on our camera view here all right and she looks a little bit too disinterested for me so i, I don't really care for that so much yeah um i think we should have her instead of this i'm just gonna cut the head off the snake as they say <laughs> and um have her look a little bit more bright and hopeful yeah um I think one of the most successful uh, Lady Snakes is from Kung Fu Panda. Oh, yeah, she's great. Great character design. I'm 
Let's uh, she'll be a, a diamondback rattler. Yeah. Nice to be specific. Yeah. Little, little cutie snake. Here we go. Let's give her some uh, little eye something too, just for funsies. Yeah. yeah. It's the first time we're seeing this character, so we want to get as much information as possible from this establishing shot. Yes. And let's duplicate that shot and then get in on if it's selected. Then one of my tricks I really like to do is, you know, turn everything into one color so I don't have to, I'm gonna turn on the, um, the backlight like you like, Ariel, just, just mm. for you. Just Aww, for you. thank you. So. It warms my heart. While you're drawing that, like I, uh, I, I love doing, um, you know, layer transforms, layer uh, slides and things like that. But I will say, uh, working on shows, uh, those don't always translate in the exporting process to the editor. So oftentimes, as I found as a board artist, I would have to, you know, I put it in for the, the board uh, pitch. But then once it was going to the editor, I'd find myself chopping up those scenes just to break up that uh, layer motion so that it doesn't, it can translate through into the, uh, the panels uh, if that's how the editor likes to work. So uh, yeah, you always have to be mindful uh, of the people that you're working with and the production process when uh, storyboarding for, for any, anyone interested in knowing what uh, any details on working productions are like. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think that's one of the things that, uh, a lot of people sort of gravitate toward in this show is just, uh, you know, some of the advice um, that, ha you know, uh, we have a lot of really great guests, yourself included. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a, there's a lot of knowledge there. There's a lot of knowledge about, um, you know, what is, what's it like being on a show or, um, you know, some of the tips and tricks about, just being a board artist professionally. Mm -hmm. And and one of the things that I really like about this uh, sort of modern era of creativity um, is the fact that information is widely disseminated. And I feel like there's, there's a little bit less guesswork uh, when it comes to what to expect in mm -hmm. an industry job. I mean, <clears throat> when you're fresh out of school, generally you get in there and you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'll learn. <laughs> okay. and, you kind of uh, learn a, a lot on the job once you get in there. So that's what happened to me. So, Oh, for sure. There's like, yeah. you know, the way that you were taught in school and then there's the way that each show operates. And, yeah, uh, that's, that's another thing. Every show is a little bit different. So uh, you kind of have to just learn to be flexible and uh, not every tool you have in your toolbox will be needed for each production, but it's nice to just learn. Uh, and then if you're working on your own personal stuff, you can just go to the races. You know, you, you're, you're, you've got all the tools you need. You don't have to worry about, you know, like the, the production pipeline. Yeah. And you know, uh, one of the things that has been really striking me lately is just the, the availability of like being able to do stuff on your own, you know? Yeah. With the Storyboard Pro and a Harmony license, you can do a lot of stuff these days. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, so uh, she's sort of, you know, checking her stuff out on the phone and then waiting. Sometimes we can get away with just moving around some assets. Yeah. I love the uh, vector drawing. Just move a stroke if you need to. <clears throat> Another uh, character, snake character that I really enjoyed was Mr. Snake from the bad guys. Oh, he was great. 
I also yeah, love Mark Marin, so I was just happy to hear his voice coming out of Snake. I'm like, yeah, th that's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> when but when yeah. they're doing the um, the Pulp Fiction thing in the beginning, that was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So another great phone, looks around. Let's just duplicate that one. Um, And then I think we should do a bit of a cross dissolve and like, you know, two hours later, you know, <laughs> <I'm just waiting laughs> you know, like they well, do wait. A, uh, what do we know she's waiting on? We know we have, she has her phone out. Should we do an insert shot of like, you know, the screen on her phone, maybe a picture of this hunky, uh, I don't know, Komodo dragon or, or whatever she thinks she's meeting. Okay. I dig that. Um, okay, so then let's duplicate this uh, again, and then uh, uh, we can do a little bit of board speak here and have the phone go, you know, ding. Yeah. As she's uh, sitting there. Nice. While you're drawing that, we got a couple of questions from the chat. Uh, oh, great. Live, live from 5B4 says, hey, guys, what kind of impact do you expect AI to have on storyboarding in the animation industry? Ooh, um, coming in with the... the coming in hot, man. Hot topics, um, yeah. Well, I'll... I think it will make an impact. I don't know what it's going to be at the moment because what I've seen is still pretty limited. You know, uh, it'll it'll take a while to get to the point where you know it can do what we can do, or if if at all. Uh, well, it'll just rip us off right now from from yeah, what we've for... seen with the models. You know, once it gets its data set, that's that's the biggest thing. Is, yeah. Uh, you know. The data set and and all of the mining that they uh, are unscrupulously stealing from artists but you know so uh i don't know i think i think ai is definitely an issue for people but there's one you know something that i think everybody should really realize is that storytelling is so much about the human experience in a lot of ways and mm -hmm. uh, you know you could get decent shots or whatever maybe out of an ai but they're not going to be able to tell a story like you like a human artist can they just can't yeah they don't understand the emotion behind it right and so um right now i think uh you know as a board artist you know we're doing okay and really it's going to come down to the passion you bring to a project you know what i mean like is this something you want to do like is this something that you you're passionate about is this something that you're going to put other things on hold to do, you know what I mean? Because uh, there's a lot of avenues in life that people can go down and becoming a storyboard artist is one of those. So, but is, is that the path you really want to trot down? And, you know, if AI is there as a competitor, it's there as a competitor, you know, in some way, shape or form by some unscrupulous producer somewhere. Yeah. So, um, or if, if you want to look at it from, more of a bright side, you can also view it as a tool, you know, if uh, like Storyboard Pro is a tool for us, um, how can you utilize, you know, AI, at least in its form currently to be a, a helpful tool to kind of eliminate some of like the more automated, like, oh, okay, I, I just want an over the shoulder shot, uh, just set that up for me. And then you can go in and do the more fun stuff of like, oh, the uh, the acting beats, all all the stuff that you, it, they're, it's not really terribly good at. And uh, yeah, I think that's the best way you can kind of view it as a, on a, in not a self-defeating way, you know, like, okay, yeah. how can I utilize this as a tool? So, well, it, you know, I did come across one that one AI that was really interesting to me was, uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, cadmium AI. No, I haven't. It actually is like a, um, like, like colors stuff for you. Hmm. Like it, uh, it's sort of like an automated uh, animation coloring. 
I mean, Harmony has features that do a lot of cool stuff like that too. Um, but like, if there's a use case scenario for, for AI that I would like to see, it would be more as a digital assistant to do the grunt, mm -hmm. the mundane work like you're talking about, as opposed exactly. to like a generator of, of stuff. Mm -hmm. And plus, if like you have, there's there's always going to be unscrupulous, you know, producers and people who want to just use that exclusively. It's it's never going to totally get it right for them. They're going to have to hire artists to quote unquote fix what you know, the AI just can't get right. You know, whether they're bad at writing prompts or or things like that. Um, and granted, nobody wants to be the guy that goes in and cleans that stuff up. But it's also you know, there's, there's <laughs> always going to be things to do. Uh, but also if like you're an independent creator, you know, you can use it as a tool to get a project kind of uh, a proof of concept up fast and efficiently. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's some plus sides you can try and glean from it. But, uh, but yeah, that's my takeaway. I think that's absolutely valid. All right. So a little, a little bit of counter movement here. We've got her and she's, uh, um, you know, I think nice. we can just take that to the end. Mm -hmm. She's just kind of on her phone looking around. Ding. Oh, okay. I think maybe we should stop the camera move about right there. Yeah. Drop a keyframe in there and uh, delete this last camera. Nice. So ding. Oh, and it's, uh, um, I think we can go in, in on the frame pretty, pretty tight. Yeah. Just get kind of the side of the phone so you know what we're looking at and uh Yeah, some of this like right here. Maybe maybe a little bit a little bit wider. Yeah, you get too close, then sometimes the background elements kind of look more abstract and it's kind of hard to make out. The last thing you want is your audience, you know, struggling to understand what they're they're looking at. Yeah. But I don't know, like you're you're an excellent draftsman and uh clarity is important though. Like, clarity is very yeah. important. And um, you know, making sure that you know, I, I feel like a lot of times, you know, we have a clear idea of what we're talking about in our heads. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, no. sometimes that's not really apparent to others. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Many a times, let's, uh, as a board artist, it helps to, you know, number one, always talk with your director and make sure like, hey, is this, this is reading for me. Is this reading for you? Or just grabbing your fellow board artists, um, just kind of showing it real quick. I would do that all the time on some of my old shows where, uh, you know, if I had a gag that I want to make sure is really hitting, hitting the mark and like, okay, I grab a coworker of mine, like, okay, watch this, play it for them, get the laugh I want. And like, cool, I got it. They, everything read really clearly. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about a little bit on the show, but like having like a good support network of artists that you, you know, kind of can rely on. That's so important. Mm -hmm. So important. Okay, so we got a little a little text. I think we can, um, you know, do this and then be like, um, we'll do the thing that the phones do when there's more than one message. <laughs> Running late. Um, Maybe we can fit in some kind of animal pun in there, like uh, be right there, yeah. uh, and then uh, I think what we can do is uh, duplicate that. We'll make that be right there, heart, heart, heart. Um, just delete that and then reduplicate it. Whoops, it's not the right button. All right, running late. And then uh, let's put a little camera move in there and we'll pan down uh, with a, uh, a picture of the hunky. Uh, How to do the selfie arm, you know. Mm 
Now, if you don't know what a Komodo dragon looks off off the top of your head, I could pitch another. <laughs> well, what does the chat have to say? That's what I'm curious about. I'm curious. I haven't seen. Uh, anybody have any suggestions on what her bow looks like? Uh, in the meantime, uh, David Kim asked another question. Have you guys ever tried any 24 hour animation challenges? Uh, I myself, I haven't. I'm curious, Mike, have you? A long time ago at mm -hmm. uh, the World Animation Celebration when I was like 18. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Um, I, I do run a, a thing when we're able to get funding for it uh, called Animation Dance Party, which uh, happens oh, over yeah. the course of a few months uh, sometimes. But, uh, you know, um, the 24 hour animation challenges. Dude, if you can do it, do it. It's a great experience. You know, it's it's cool when you just make something and you just it's made. You make it. Boom, it's done. You know, you have a small crew, you're you're firing in all cylinders, you're staying up late, you're fueled with caffeine and and charisma, and you're 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 going. It's a, it's a fun experience. I was all gonna right, say it sounds like an eighteen year old's uh, dream, but uh older you get, like I'm sure it's a... Uh... Oh, okay. Got to do the, he's pulling his shirt up over his abs, but it's just the scales that he's showing off. That's kind of fun. Nice. Let's do a little loading screen here too, just for funsies. <laughs> it's very true to life. <laughs> it's like, so much she's in the woods, right? True, yeah. She wouldn't be getting some great reception. It shows up as like a rabbit. <laughs> She's been she's been being catfished. All right, the new shot. Yeah. And then, then we're doing the SpongeBob. What two hours later? Oh wait, no, we got to show her reacting to it, and then we got to do yeah. it two hours later. <laughs> Reaction shots very important. Always want to know what the character's feeling. Yep. What are they feeling? What are they thinking? What, you know, you yeah. got to get that. You got to get that great subtext in there, right? Yeah. You know, because especially always... for like, you know, you're working on a show for for kids. Like I've worked in Disney Junior, you know, media for a while. It's it's very much you got to make sure the clear. It's clear what the character's feeling, thinking, and hopefully visually you're getting that across. I always hate it when it's like the character has to say what they're feeling and. Oh you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, sorry if you hear my right. fired. Sorry if you hear my smoke detector going off. I think it needs a new battery, so. Oh, it's all right. My cheap uh, ass. You know, sometimes it's it's appropriate to have somebody say what they think or say what they feel. But generally, um, you know, that's going to be better as it, if it's shown. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it resonates a little bit easier and... I think kids are a lot smarter than, you know, some, some people give them credit for, I think. Yeah, I got to do the hard eyes. Mm. 
you know, we can uh, let's just duplicate that really quick, and we'll go back here, and we'll add a little squash drawing. Ooh, yeah. Squash and stretch. I love adding overshoots and stuff like that. It just makes the boards pop in the animatic. Yep. You know, again, if the production calls for it, there are some shows that you really shy away from the, the more cartoony elements. You just got to know what, you know, what kind of show you're you're on and what it's asking for you. Yeah, just what what's expected of you. Yeah, exactly. Because I've jumped between, like, you know, more adult animation and then jumping into, you know, uh, preschool shows and then back and forth. It's uh, kind of be on your, need to be on your toes and kind of know what you can get away with. And even on my show, like there's some characters like on Alice's Wonderland Bakery, you know, we have human characters that are more, you know, you want to treat them more uh, human like you don't want to get too cartoony because you can kind of disengage with them emotionally. But um uh, I think we had one episode where we brought on uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, or at least our version of them, which was Tweedledoo and Tweedledon't. And we were like, okay, let's get real cartoony with them. You know, we kind of looked off of um, the original animated uh, show and just kind of talked with the uh, the animation team. Because when you're working on a show that's CG, you have CG models that are rigged and you want to make sure you're not going to break the rig. So we would communicate them yes. back with them back and forth. We're like, hey, can these characters do this? We would send samples of some of the boards we would do and go, can they do this? Can you make it so that they uh, they can get away? And that they're really great at communicating. Our, our animation studio, they're wonderful. They're uh, Icon Animation Studios in Canada. And they were wonderful. They, they even would get excited seeing some of the boards and they'd be like, yeah, we're gonna try and make this work. So uh, sometimes it's a give and take. Sometimes there's just, there's not enough time in uh, the schedule or the budget, but, um, as long as you communicate and, and keep the board artist aware of what the studio can do and what the rig can do, uh, there's always going to be a good in-between solution. Yes. I mean, even, even in a normal, like, Harmony rig show, like, mm -hmm. uh, you have to be aware of your the limitations of animation, right? Yeah. And you have to change your storyboards at times to accommodate that sort of thing. Um and it, it, in your staging, can... sorry, your I didn't staging. mean to talk over you. Yeah, yeah, I, that's okay. Uh, in your I'll staging, see. in your uh, mm -hmm. uh, approach. I was going to say, sometimes limitations can lead to really interesting creative solutions. Uh, I remember working on a show where I was doing a song where we had to show. Uh, a candle being lit, but for whatever reason, I don't know if it was, I, it couldn't be the limitation of the animation. I, I think it was more of like a, because it was a junior show, they were worried about showing, you know, a, a candle being, I don't know, like is instructions to children. It was a very stupid rule, but uh, I came up with a solution that was like, okay, I will show the candle being lit up without showing somebody having to light it would just kind of like, I think I started with one candle and then it rotated around. I think it was a, uh, it was a Hanukkah. It was a, a menorah. It was a, a special uh, Hanukkah song that I was doing. So I started like, you know, you're looking at it, just the one candle and then it rotates around and then suddenly like all of the, the candles are already lit. So I didn't have to show it. And I remember my, sh uh, my, uh, my supervising director was just really like, Oh, that's a really cool solution. And it was just born from, having a limitation that I had to work around. So. Yeah. yeah. So I think we can do like a little tongue flick here. <laughs> like, yeah. Ooh, she's getting excited. Something animal specific to show the excitement is great. Yeah. And you know, and, and that speaks to character too. I think you need to yeah. really like be into the character that you're doing. Um, okay. So uh, then we'll do the, you know, <laughs> the SpongeBob thing, I guess. <laughs> what am I doing this for? You know what? Let me have a text tool for that we'll very just type reason. Type it out, yeah. Two hours later. Right there. Yeah. If anybody has any other questions, feel free to hop it, uh, put it down in the chat. But uh. Or any other suggestions to add on, like, uh, like, okay, what, 
what should it end up being? I think, Mike, you said a, a rabbit, which I think is a good so, uh, good surprise. But if anybody has can think of something, like, feel free. So like then my worry is, like, why is a rabbit courting a snake? Like, what? It's a rabbit in a snake costume? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, what's uh, what what's a natural predator of, of snakes? I guess hawk, mm. a hawk in a rabbit hawk. outfit. Yeah. Well, I said, uh, like you want to go the Ricky Tiki Tabby mode, you know, get a mongoose or something like that, or two hours two later. Let's see. I, I don't know. Uh, what what does our chat think? Tell me. Tell me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. There we go. We got to cut to the snake next, and she's okay. She's probably bummed out. Maybe, uh, yeah. I think we, we can do let's go back to the original scene here and we'll uh grab these vectors. I'm gonna do uh point to camera, and we're just gonna grab these vectors and take it back to um the 2D realm right here. Like that. I don't want to add to your, your workload here, but maybe if we needed like a, a little table with some glasses of wine that she's gone through, I don't know. I think maybe she should just be like, you know, all sprawled out. <laughs> yeah, tapping. Put the, the rattle on her. I like the tapping though. She's just yeah. <laughs> like uh someone get out my, my cutter right here. Yeah. And then uh just kind of do this. Ah, tapping the head. <laughs> and let's put uh let's grab the phone let's put the phone like right here yeah Mike, I was curious, because uh, I know you're directing too, so I'm curious, like, what's your favorite stage of, you know, the production process? Like, I mean, I think each stage has its own uh, particular charm to it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm both a storyboard supervisor, episodic director, depending on the show, and mm -hmm. animation supervisor, so I've had a lot of different uh, roles. Um so each of them has their own sort of thing about it that makes it fun. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, one of the things that I like about the storyboarding process is just coming up with that. It, it storyboarding process is all about emotional content, right? It's all oh, about yeah. telling the story in the, the most appropriate way. It's all about being able to understand your characters, know what they're going through and know what they're thinking. Right. And um, when you get into the animation part, then you're getting into the nitty gritty of performance, right? You don't, you can only take performance so far on boards, but when you get into the real performance and animation, then it's like, well, this is what the audience is going to see. Like, mm -hmm. this is what, this is what people are going to relate to. And, uh, you know, hopefully your boards come across in a way that speaks to the animation uh, and, uh, and that sort of emotional content comes through in the performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I definitely find charm in every step of the process. I will say there's a special place in my heart for, you know, storyboarding, uh, communicating with the board artists and kind of working with them to really, I, to me, that's where 
things really start to take life. You know, you've got a script or if it's a show that's board driven, maybe just an outline or something. And that's, and that's important. But, um, but once like what you're doing right now, Mike, like I, those are my favorite stages. Like you're bringing this character out and you, once you start, you know, paneling through and seeing all the little things that you can add to it, just it's coming to life. It's, it's just like my favorite aspect. And I, I will say, I also really enjoy the editing room, really getting to work with the editor and the revisionists and, uh, and getting, getting closer to what you think the final episode is going to, you know, be, uh, before it goes to the animators. Um, and, uh, yeah. And even like, uh, even though I hate to like cut, you know, things because it's like, oh, that that's representative of hard work that people have worked on. Is you're, if you're a board artist, you know, a lot of your scenes are going to get cut regardless. It's just, you know, going to happen to, uh, get a show down to time. Um, and sometimes I just, you know, even if it's my own boards, I'm, I'm fine with like, no, lose it, lose it. It's not helping, you know, uh, that's when you really see, uh, what's helping the story and what isn't and uh what's getting yeah. straight to the point you know the the whole murdering your darlings thing we come we come across that like quite extensively yeah uh you know when you're working in boards professionally so let's see she goes yeah. her phone rings what looks at it and comes down And then this one will be her. I remember when I was a, uh, 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 early years of, you know, storyboarding and working, I remember I went nuts with camera moves. Like I, I remember I had a, uh, one of the first shows I worked on, I had a director who was just kind of like, he was laughing, but he was just like, he's like, I'm counting up the number of camera moves you're putting in one scene. And I'm like, oh man, sorry. And he's like, let's just, just keep it down to like maybe two if you absolutely have to. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, uh, still Yeah, because if you're moving the camera, it's too much. Like you lose all the motion. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you have like a camera competing against your characters moving. That's never yeah. a good thing. Yeah, you don't want it to distract too much because it does take the viewer's eyes a, a, a few seconds to kind of catch up with what's happening. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, she she gets up and looks. Let's uh, let's take that camera up a little bit higher. I think I think it needs to be yeah. a little mm -hmm. bit higher, a little bit wider. You know what? I, actually, what what if we do this? What if we have her instead of looking that way? Boom, boom. Get rid of all these extra lines that we don't need. <laughs> kind of like a. Ew. You do have a cute snake design. I I like I like her. Is she disappointed or confused? I think probably disappointed. Yeah. Because standing before her, let's uh, let's put let's do an, uh, an over the snake shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do an over the shoulder with a character that doesn't have shoulders? Who knows? We'll figure you it know. out. Uh, Maybe she has over, a kink in her. <laughs> over the dress rim, I guess, is what we, yeah. we could do. Um, and let's. Uh, I think we need a better. And there he is. <laughs> He's got buttons.
it's all chunky and I have an idea. What if instead of the over the shoulder, you start close on the top of that head, that fake head, and then do like kind of a dramatic like truck out to reveal the rest of the body? Oh, I like that. I like that. Um, boom. Uh, oh, I mean just the top of the snake head. So you see the snake head and you don't see the the, the bunny face peeking out yet. Uh, sorry, these are my executive notes. I hope I'm not bugging you. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> You're absolutely fine. He's got eyebrows for some yes. reason. Well, she can have eyelashes, then, you know, he can have eyebrows. <laughs> Why not, right? It's cartoon. Yeah, exactly. Animals need eyebrows. Like, it just... Oh, you know, he should be too. Is like, hey, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's got a little eyebrow wiggle underneath. These are like carrots or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the more uh, thrown together, the better. Yeah. Let's get I this. I always like that aspect when I was working on. Uh, chicken squad disney jr's chicken squad where we had like all these like farmyard animal characters who are anthropomorphic like one aspect i always loved about that show is it reminded me of chip and dale's Re rescue rangers where everything was very clear you know where they got it from you know everything their world is built off of found objects from the human world so that always yeah. added to the charm for me he's like <laughs> hey <laughs> <laughs> so What's up, girl? <laughs> you know, you can get away with a lot of stuff just moving uh, vectors around sometimes. There's... Mm -hmm not always the need to do every drawing new you know? oh yeah well especially if you're working on a deadline like yeah i try to preserve as much of my drawing as possible because it just saves me so much time you get a lot of mileage out of, out yeah. of the vectors you know yeah so and sometimes like you don't need brutal. to do like a major move you just some of the subtler acting choices are the funniest Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Nice. Uh, let's get our select by color and get rid of this underdrawing here. So, so girl, <laughs> <laughs> you ready to go? <laughs> Should the cost costume malfunction a little bit? <laughs> like almost like. <laughs> I have an idea. What if his hand comes out from behind it and like moves the eyebrows up and down? <laughs> like they're on some sort of a, a trigger, you know? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay, we need to do uh, this one where he's kind of like, you know, reaches back behind the head. Yeah. 
I like that your mind went to a very Muppet kind of uh, yeah <laughs> kind of area there. Yeah, I love Muppets. I grew up in a Muppet household. Me too. It's like literally to the point, like I remember being a kid, my dad would just shout from the living room, like Muppets are on! And like, we just run to the living room. We, we didn't care what, what version it was. Like, it's, it's fine. Could be a commercial. It's... Yeah, I had the, um, I had the, the fortune, the good fortune to do um, like a, a church talent show. And we did a Muppet show theme. And I got to, mm -hmm. you know, get my, my Kermit puppet out and do the, the whole intro kind of thing on stage. That was super fun. Oh, cool. And, uh, my friend, my friend Ryan was really uh, enjoying being the MC against Kermit the Frog. <laughs> Wait, did you do the voice too? Or was it just, you were just. Oh yeah. I was, I was voicing from behind the stage. I had my, pu my, oh, my nice. puppet through like the curtain, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the middle of the curtain. And uh, it was it was really fun. It was really fun. Okay. So we can uh, have those eyes yeah. waggle uh, or eyebrows waggle a couple times. Nice. <clears throat> and I think we should cut back to a uh, you know an over the shoulder kind of like <laughs> maybe see a few seams kind of popping. <laughs> yeah be fun you see like the the mechanism behind here it's like all stitched and stuff like all of the stuff is all stitched together i want to get like a good shot of her just like what is this I love a good raised eyebrow. I feel like it's the expression that I, I probably abuse at this point, but it always cracks yeah. me up. Oh, I forgot. I, we didn't put eyebrows on her. Yeah, we can retroactively change that. I make changes all the time when I'm storyboarding. I come up with a better idea later down. I'm like, but then I go, ah, crap. I have to retroactively go back and change that, but. It's a rough board. It's it's fine. You can get away with it. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> you are a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? She's been waiting there. It's uh probably getting hungry. She might just go kind of yeah, dinner and yeah, date and a dinner, you know. I think it should go one of two ways. Uh, she eats him after having, you know, for, for the inconvenience of waiting. Or mm -hmm. she's like, oh, whatever. Let's just go. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the eating would be expected. And it's like, what's what's the non-expected, you know, reaction from her? So, like, the actual guy comes out of the rabbit's mouth. And he's like, all right, let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> like it, like it. Fooled you. Guys. A true donkey. <laughs> and it's a fun challenge because, like, you know, obviously I'm sure most of these that you've done are just, like, there's really no dialogue or anything like that. So how do you communicate well, we this? Pick it up as we go along. <laughs> yeah. What is this? <laughs> yeah. We bunch up her body so that she has shoulders that so she can just kind of shrug and be like, all right. Oh, oh. Or she zips down and reveals that she is also not a snake. No, she's also a <laughs> rabbit. Yeah. But at least her costume was much better.
She's actually an owl that eats him. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's like, no, wrong predator. Ah. Flies off of him. I regret nothing. <laughs> so what is the chat think? What, how should we resolve this? Yeah, that's a good question. We're uh, running out of time here. Getting what? close to the end of this. If anybody has a thought. He presents her with a bouquet of mice. Aw, you shouldn't have. <laughs> That's better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now, do we go dark? Are they dead mice or are they just wriggling around? Just. I brought lunch and they're just like looking at him <laughs> like, dude, like, hey. you said this was different. <laughs> <laughs> or opens up like a chocolate box and it's, it's mice or whatever. Chocolate like, oh, shouldn't have. Yeah. Uh, my favorite Monty oh, Python yeah. sketch with the chocolate shop that sells crunchy frog chocolates. <laughs> You've got bones in them. Well, yeah. Where would the crunch be? We need to change this a little bit. Oh, this reminds me too. So uh, one aspect of working on a production that's uh, CG, but you're a board artist who's primarily working in uh, 2D, you can't really get away with cheats like this, like uh, these over the shoulder where you kind of see the profile of the character. You always have to remember, um, okay, my character is a CG model and they are, you have to really think true 3D. So, um, you know, we couldn't get yeah. away, like, which I love doing shots like this in, in 2D. You just can't do that in CG. So unfortunately those bag of tricks you can't use, but. Um, well, but I mean, you have like, to know. Yeah. Yeah. You always have to know the limitations of the animation process. Yeah. That's what that's what like I think differentiates some board artists from others is that they mm -hmm. understand the underlying process that's going to be involved later on down the line. Um, and that's like an invaluable skill. Like if you know a little bit about everything, you're going to be a better board artist. Yeah. Uh, you don't I mean, be an told expert at everything, but just oh, knowing yeah. a little bit of the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. I feel like draftsman skills are most important over like you can learn all the tricks of, you know, Storyboard Pro. But, um, you know, if you don't have a strong set of like understanding perspective and, and character design and animation, like, uh, yeah, you don't have to know it all. Just know enough to be able to, uh, to you know, get by. Uh, you have to, but know I, enough to be able to operate. Yeah, uh, I will say we have 10 minutes left. So, Mike, can you... Uh, Play us the animatic that we uh, we've con you've constructed. We you've constructed, <laughs> giving myself far too much credit there. <laughs> yes, I, I will do that once we once we finish <laughs> the end of the story. Yeah, you right. can do it. I believe in you. This is another true to form story artist. You're always cutting things down to the wire. Just do a bunch of mouse butts and just copy and paste. And then we'll just grab this right here and we'll go whoop like that. Show the heart opening. Does this change your mind? <laughs> Bunch of mice in there. <laughs> Gotta love a morbid punchline. It's it's pretty great. Yeah, perfect. She can react in the same shot, just like ooh.
think we can uh, we can du duplicate this one. Nice. And be like. To the, the heart box. Make sure she's got her eye line on the. I'm gonna always make sure that that's going on. Oh yeah. And then I uh, could not. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, again, we're getting pretty close to the end here, but uh, man, gotten further than I would have gotten. <laughs> like, uh, okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, good enough. And then we'll do one more little thing and uh, just have the, we'll go back to this, this shot here. We'll copy uh, this, we'll duplicate that. And take it all the way to the end. This would scroll faster. That'd be great. Come on, scroll faster, scroll faster, scroll faster. <laughs> there we go. We're at the end there. Ooh, we got a new scene. And then uh, we'll oh, go put it on the selection tool first. And then we'll widen out. And then... Uh, you know, we'll see them, we'll see them leaving. So we'll do one, um, one pose of her turning and leaving right here. And then cut to this, and we see her just kind of slithering down the mountainside, and homeboy right here. And nice. just and it's a great opportunity to see the entire costume. Yeah. Maybe his cottontail is sticking out the butt end. Yeah. And he's got the, you know, it's all janky and stuff, and. Oh gosh, this, these drawings are getting terrible. Um, <laughs> just lollipop heads. Just that's all you need. Yeah, good enough. Yeah, I can follow what's happening. It's fine. And then he's just like, nice. "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> so she's agreeing to go with him. Yeah, like whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. get the snake outfit. Yes. <laughs> All right. And then uh, they slither-ish off together. <laughs> oh, more time, okay. we could probably have fun with posing out that awkward slither for the bunny in the costume. Oh, for, <laughs> for sure. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do the recap. Yes. All right, open, opening up on a forest scene, we move through the trees and waiting on a rock is a lovely uh, young female snake. She gets a text on her phone. Ding! She looks around, or she's looking on her phone, and then she gets a text. Ding! She looks. Oh, running late. Be right there. Heart, heart, heart. And then a picture of a very handsome. Uh, rattlesnake. Oh my gosh! You know, she's so <laughs> excited. She's, uh, you know, just absolutely brimming with excitement. And then two hours later, and she's on a rock. Thunk, thunk. And then the phone, yeah, so we'll cycle this. Thunk, thunk, thunk. And then her phone rings. Huh? She looks down, goes, looks at it. Here, sorry. And that's when she looks up, excited, and then, uh, 
a little a little off put by what she sees next, which is this derpy looking outfit and like some <laughs> sort of mammal inside of the snake outfit. And he uh, waggles the eyebrows of this costume. Uh, who are you? <laughs> what is this? He's like, I brought treats. She's like, yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> then she's like, yes. And he goes, up. all right. Fun, fun, nice. fun. Well, Mike, thank you for joining us once again uh, for Collaboratory. Do you have any projects or topics that you would like to draw our attention to? Well, if we do have any international uh, people around, uh, I will be in Paris coming up in the next uh, little while at the IMAG uh, Masterclasses. I'll talk, be talking about uh, storytelling and uh, sort of like the three S's of storytelling, staging, symbolism, and subtext. Um, and also, if you are in the uh, Salt Lake City area, I'll also be at uh, Salt Lake Animation Expo. So you guys can check out Salt Lake Animation Expo at uh, slanimationexpo.com. It's going to be a really fun show. Uh, it's a great venue, um, and uh, the team running it is uh, fantastic. Awesome. So come out. Come out to the show. Heck, yeah. Uh, I wish I had more things to plug. All I can say is uh, if you have little ones, watch Alice's Wonderland Bakery on Disney+. Plus. Uh, give us more, more views, more likes. Uh, so thank you to everyone who joined us for Collaboratory. Uh, if Mike could draw in an hour, uh, this in an hour, uh, think what you could draw in three weeks. Uh, you can download a 21-day trial of Storyboard Pro from our website at toonboom.com and find free video tutorials at learn.toonboom.com. Uh, and if you're looking for more interviews, be sure to visit blog.toonboom.com for articles about storyboarding, animation, and 2D games. Until next time. We'll see you guys later. See ya.